Today we're going to talk about proper bag mask ventilation technique. Um, this is something that's uh, notoriously undertrained. It's a really important skill. Uh, most EMTs think they're good at this when actually they're not. Uh, it's not their fault. It's because they were undertrained in the first place. They don't really understand um, uh, the difficulties with proper bag mask ventilation technique. Um, most people are trained using the CE technique, which is to form uh, basically the letter C with your uh, thumb and forefinger and then the letter E with the other three fingers. Grabbing the mask uh, with the thumb and forefinger and then placing the mask over the patient's face and tightening like this. Uh, they usually do a head tilt chin lift on the mannequin and begin ventilating. Um, this works okay in a uh, classroom setting on a mannequin. Uh, the problem is in the classroom setting with the mannequin, everything's going in the ventilator's favor. You've got a uh, rubber mannequin uh, with no trauma, the airway's intact, um, so it's very easy to create a, a good seal. There's no mannequins that have beards, uh, no mannequins come with COPD, CHF, or asthma. Um, so everything's kind of going in the student's favor. The problem uh, with the CE technique is uh, if you're having trouble getting a good seal, it's usually on this side of the face because all the pressure is over here where the patient's hand is, or excuse me, the, the ventilator's hand is, so there's leaking on this side of the patient's face. There's a couple of techniques for dealing with this. The most common is simply, simply to lever down with the, with the bag on this side, but then you get into kind of a teeter-totter problem this way. The other problem is this is a really unnatural motion uh, to maintain a seal with your hand. Um, in order to keep pressure, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're cramping your hand like this. You're trying to make a motion to maintain a seal, which has you bringing your thumb and your pinky together, which works in the classroom when you're only giving a couple of ventilations at a time. Um, but with prolonged ventilations uh, on an actual patient, your forearm and your hand is going to get cramped and you're going to have problems uh, keeping a seal like this because your hand's going to get tired. Um, what uh, we recommend is using the OK technique, so making the OK symbol with your, with your hand. We want, to, want you to choke up really high on the 15 millimeter port with the BVM. What this will allow you to do is basically just with, by rotating your wrist, applying pressure evenly all across the patient's face. From there, we want you to position the, the mask properly. Most people just kind of place it ad hoc over the patient's face, or they'll aim usually for the mandible just because uh, it looks like an obvious landmark. Mandibles break, they move, these can distort with trauma, so this is not an indicator of where you want to place your mask. What we want you to do is place the top of the mask up on the bridge of the nose and then pivot it down into position just like you're closing a door. So I'm going to establish a nice high grip using my thumb and forefinger, place the mask on the bridge of the nose, lever it down, and then use my fingers to pull the patient's face up into the mask. What this allows me to do is now, as you can see, I can apply pressure in any direction on the face, and I've got a good grip underneath the mandible using these three fingers. I got a better seal because I can apply pressure evenly across the patient's face, and uh, these three fingers are pulling the face up into the mask with the natural motion. I'm squeezing like this, which is much easier than uh, this motion, which will cause your muscles to cramp. Uh, if you do it this way, you can ventilate your patient indefinitely, so I won't get any fatigue when I'm using this technique. So in the classroom setting, uh, this works because uh, everything's going in your favor. Uh, but when you've got a realistic patient that needs to be ventilated for a prolonged period of time, we recommend this. This will allow you to get a better mass seal to be able to ventilate your patients better when they have uh, difficult bag mass ventilation criteria like uh, trauma to the airway, uh, beard, if they've got dentures that are out, uh, if they've got CHF, COPD, or asthma, or anything else working against uh, the EMT. So that's the OK technique, and that's how we recommend ventilating patients.